So the left bundle branch block and what causes it. So when it comes to left bundle branch block, we know what it is. And, you know, we know what it might be, right? It might be an MI. But we have no idea what causes it other than an MI. That is the case of the average paramedic on the truck, the average nurse, right? They see a left bundle branch block. They have no idea what causes it if it's not an MI. So when they interpret those ECGs, they'll check for scarbosis criteria. And if it doesn't meet it, they'll say, it's just a left bundle branch block. Well, my question is, is it? Is it just a left on a branch block? What causes a left on a branch block? Well, before we go to that, let's identify one. So here you have an example of a left on a branch block. You have a wide QRS in V1. It is pointing down. If you use the turn signal method, that is a left on a branch block. Now, there are other criteria. There's RSR prime waves and things, but this is how traditionally we're taught how to identify one. And if I want to get more specific, I'll save that for another video. So... If not an MI, what is causing that new onset left bundle branch block that we're looking at? Coronary artery disease is one, and that's that's not a stretch to figure out, right? Um, it causes ischemia, long-term ischemia. It causes long-term deprivation of the cardiac tissues of what they need and eventually can result in conduction system degradation. Um, unmanaged long-term hypertension can also do it. Now, one method it can do this through is aortic root dilation, which is or dilation, which is a little more complicated than I want to explain as a sidebar on a video, but I did put a picture of it up top so that you can see what it looks like when an aneurysm begins to form right at the very top of the aorta. So right over to the side, you can see one. Lyme disease can do this. Now, it can do it through being a disease of the actual conduction system, but also it can cause cardiomyopathy, which is sort of a big deal. Unmanaged Lyme disease, especially atypically presenting Lyme disease, people go years and years and years and they don't know they have it. And then they manifest a left bundle branch block, they manifest cardiomyopathy, which causes that left bundle branch block. And when you get to them, they're sick, they're hypotensive, they don't feel well, they've got the malaise, the lethargy, and all that. And it may look like a new onset left bundle branch block. They may be in failure, but it doesn't meet scarbosis criteria. And you're, you're left a little confused as to what's going on. This can happen after cardiac surgery. So cardiac surgery is way too extensive to explain as a category in one video. It, it's probably too extensive to explain in a category in a thousand videos. But cardiac surgery can leave a left bundle branch block. And this is usually something the patient will understand, or at least the patient's physician will definitely understand because they, they did the surgery. There are specific diseases of the conduction system that can cause this. All right? There are also a prior MI. So you could have a prior, say, septal wall MI that could cause something like this. And then, of course, there's going to be other things. So just because it's not new or it's not an MI, does not mean it's not a bad thing. A left bundle branch block is a sign of, of a worsening condition and usually a long-standing disease process. Not being positive for scarbosis criteria is, does not mean they're not sick, and it doesn't mean they don't require acute care. It just means you're probably not going to go to a cath lab. They may still need all kinds of emergency care. They may still be in all sorts of a bad way. Um, they can still code if they're poorly compensating. Am I or no? You can die if you're not doing well. And a left bundle branch block is a sign of someone who is not doing as well as they could be doing, whether it's new onset or not. All right. So now that you know a little more, get out there and practice.